everybody. Welcome to the special screening of Captain Abu Rayed. Could I please introduce the filmmaker? This is Amin Matalka and his leading star, Nadeem Sawalha. Thank you. I think from the beginning, um, our goal was to make a movie that um, could change the perception of Arabs in the, in the world. I think there are so many stories that uh, people can relate to. Nadeem? Uh, 50 years ago, I left Jordan to look for the complete man. 50 years later, this brilliant young man brings me up from LA and he says, the complete man is in our man waiting for you. <laughs> How many of you are Jordanians here? Oh Hi. my goodness, we look are among friends, aren't we? <laughs> well, I know you'll enjoy the film and I hope the rest of you as well. And we'll see you in the Q&A, thanks so much. The complete man is Abu Rayed, an airport janitor who finds a pilot's hat. <laughs> and entertains the local children with his fantasy adventures. Captain Abu Rayed. He inspires them to think beyond their social constraints. But Murad, a victim of domestic abuse, no longer believes in dreams. <laughs> Abu Rayyad changes Murad's mind and becomes his hero. <laughs> he also befriends independent-minded pilot Nur, <laughs> a woman who's struggling to escape her parents' pressures for marriage. <laughs> Captain Abu Rayed is Jordan's first feature film in 50 years. Debut writer director Amin Matalka shot his $2 million film in just 23 days and hopes his film signifies the start of the Jordanian film industry. <laughs> Captain Abu Rayed's already picked up an audience award at the Sundance Film Festival and Dubai's Best Actor Award for Nadim Sawal. <laughs> Nadim, you've told me that you've played this character many times in, in many different ways. Yeah, and small bits and pieces. W you know, Abu Ra'id on paper was very open to interpretation. Nadim said, I see him as, well, you, you say it. I said to my friend, I mean, Captain Abu Ra'id is a man in this world, but not of the world. He's above the materialistic values of most people. Amin looked at me and he said, well, that's great. An English director would have said, you know, get rid of him. <laughs> You've had an exceptional career, though, in, in Europe, haven't you? Equally so, your daughters, two of which are very successful yeah. actresses here yeah. as well, and they're yeah. hiding in the back. Yeah. You s did you see the film for the first time today? Julia got her hanky out. After what it's, it's when the broom came out. When I discovered he was a cleaner, that was it. I was, I was gone for the rest of the film. <laughs> Let me tell you something about this scene. It was shot with about 600 people in the airport behind barriers looking at me. <laughs> That pilot that passes in that scene was my father, actually. He's a real pilot, so it was like nice to have a cameo. Anywhere else I'd say, oh, a female pilot, that's a nice character. Did you deliberately make her a female because you wanted to send some sort of message? Yeah, it's not something unrealistic. Um, I know of three female pilots in Royal Jordanian in the airline in Jordan. Jordan is a very moderate place. Um, I think there's a lot of room for empowerment and a lot of need for more empowerment. Social status became kind of very interesting because the dynamic between Noor and Abu Ra'id, uh, you know, evolves in the beginning. She's the pilot and he's the janitor. And as the movie progresses, they meet in the middle by, you know, the rooftop scene. <laughs> Hey. 
بسكر عيوني وبشوف الكون كله من فوق One of the things obviously that you deal with in the film is is domestic violence. When I wrote the first draft, it was these really sweet characters, but there was no conflict in the movie. And not until maybe the like sixth or seventh draft, I was in Jordan, and I was looking for a conflict. <laughs> And um, I went to the Jordan River Foundation, um, which is a shelter for abused children. And I saw lots of very angry kids who are just beautiful on the outside, but they have so much, uh, you know, anger boiling inside. <laughs> It became very apparent that this was actually the hero's journey. You know, the movie is very much following the classic Joseph Campbell mythology of, you know, the reluctant hero who realizes there's a problem and then he overcomes it. Maybe it's just what Jewish way, huh? Spanish. We found the kids at the refugee camps. Most of them come from orphan centers. I would interview the kids and one of the kids who's Murad in the movie, I asked him, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And before him, every kid would say, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a, an engineer. And then he said, I want to be a pilot. And it was like a sudden realization that this is a sign. This is, this is your kid. And then every kid after him comes back and they're like, uh, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> is censorship an issue that still needs to be addressed? I was saying to Amin that the only thing that matters in life is courage. You know, even the relationship between Noor and Abu Raid is pushing the borders a, 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 a little bit. I New York. New York. So if Amin, as a thinker, goes on push pushing the borders, uh, then we will survive. If we keep encouraging such such pushing of boundaries, won't we end up contradictive to our values? And wouldn't that like sort of affect the Arabic identity in general? I'm, I'm just wondering. <laughs> no, we're, not. we're in no trouble of losing our identity. These are all lies used by our ruling classes to keep us into a state of ignorance. <laughs> You are the people who've got to stand up and say, this is life, and we've got to learn about it. You know, my generation is wiped out, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Abu Raed. Captain. From a little gem of a film about a poor man who dreams of a more exciting life to a lavish spectacle of power and privilege. It's what Bollywood does best and our reporter Sat Nabatia is there. Man Singh, ho. 40 years ago, Bollywood told the story of the supreme Mughal emperor, Akbar. The 16th century king made a Hindu princess, Jodha, his queen, and their marriage promoted tolerance between religions. But part of the film was fictional, how their son fell for a court dancer. Today the kings, the courts and carriages have gone, but the presence of the Mughals can still be felt with the grand monuments built in their time. And now a new Bollywood film retells the history of the Mughal king. Jodha Akbar recounts the story of that arranged marriage between the Muslim ruler Akbar and the Hindu princess Jodha and how it became true love. I'm looking at how this marriage came about. It's actually celebrated. Uh, in such orthodox times, for this to have uh, been very willfully done and how love, admiration, respect for each other's religions must have happened after marriage. Bollywood's most famous actress, Aishwarya Rai, plays Queen Jodha, and Hrithik Roshan plays her king. They are tremendous actors, uh, absolutely great lookers, 
both of them have put in a lot of hours in terms of preparing for the parts by way of, you know, stuff like house riding, sword fighting. In Mumbai, where the film premiered, Jodha Akbar is expected to be a huge hit. But protests in Rajasthan, the home of Queen Jodha, stopped the film being shown there. मैं आशुतोष गोवरी कर भी को भी ये चेतावनी दे देना चाहता हूँ कि वो इतिहासकार बनने की कोशिश नहीं करें डायरेक्टर हैं तो डायरेक्टर ही रहें। But writer-director Ashutosh stands by his film. This has been done with utmost care, dignity, responsibility, because I want the audience to see the film and have a feeling that it might have happened like this. There's no other way of this could have happened. Ashutosh has a reputation for researching his subjects, having spent four years studying the colonial system for his Oscar-nominated Lagan. You beat us in this game, and I'll cancel your tax. Recently, historical films have not fared well in Bollywood, but the director says all audiences will embrace this love story. Well, that's it for this fabulous picture show. Thank you so much for joining us. When do you start the next film? Well, hopefully within the next year, we'll be rolling cameras on the next one and. Nadim, you're going to be a busy man, huh? Yes. What are you going to do? Hollywood's <laughs> corner call. Oh, you know? here comes Nadim. Watch it. Here he comes. Yes. <laughs> here comes the cast of Abura again. <laughs> they strike again. We hope you do strike again because I'd love to have you back on the show. Thanks again. And we hope to see you as well again soon. Taibala. Lazim Amshiana. Yenno. Fi wara ashgari kitiri. I direct the film 10 because I think it's a really inspirational, moving story. It really shows that we, we're not just political people. Watching the film, it just hit home and that feeling yeah. is, oh my God, this is like our life and it's up on the screen. It's an eye-opener and I loved it.